Hello, oh. <laughs> my name is Karolina Tut Mathisen, and I'm happy to be here to talk about educational leadership in working with children with special needs. My main point is that ed educational leadership must facilitate teacher, teachers' competences and skills in working with children with special needs. My views relate to how different leader levels of leadership um, uh, must work together. Brunfenbrenner's four levels are useful to explain my thinking. Educational leadership at macro, exo and meso levels influences what happens at the micro level. In fact, to successfully work with children with special needs, good educational leadership is important at all levels. From the Education Act at the macro level, through principles, educational leadership, to the teacher interacting with a child on a daily basis, succeeds independent on choices on the other levels. Let's look closer to this. A child enter a classroom. What do we do now? It is important to understand that children's behavior always has a cause. It is the teacher's responsibility to understand this. Before giving consequences and setting boundaries, it is important to look at the cause. The classroom should ad uh, be adaptable and the actual starting point of the children's, uh, instead of being a rigid system with pre-made rules. The highest The highest priority is relationship. The responsibility of the relationship is the adult who must be the significant other in the child's life. Every child needs at least one other person who believes in them. Relationship between the teacher and the child is the key. Some children express what teachers see as unacceptable unse emotions, for example, anger and frustration. Showing acceptance of the child's emotion is important, no matter what the emotion. We can uh, never change other, but we can change ourselves. We must meet the child with ex uh, acceptance in the relationship. So, we cannot change a child, but the adult can accept the responsibility for the relationship and try to understand. The teacher can accept the child's expression of emotion. They, they give the child the possibility for self-regulation because they know that they are accepted in the relationship. The child may receive positive reinforcement and develop an inner motivation for change. The adult guides the child in their development of self-regulation. How to adjust the mindset in educational leadership? Should we adopt the children to the environment or adopt the environment to the child? The levels above the micro levels influences and set the course for the daily work with these children. Let's have a look on how to adapt the environment. To adapt the environment, we must implement a systemic approach. We should establish a framework based on the participants in the classroom. We should be adaptable and dynamic. And the whole system of educational leadership must have an interest in embracing all children with different starting points and aim at creating meaningful relationships. We think that support from the leaders of the school, teacher working uh, with children with special need, will find their work much easier. We should understand the classroom and the participants. And the important points are relationship, 
We think the teacher must be responsible for the re relationship and should understand why relationship is important. The impact of interaction between the teacher and the pupil. To see what is the cause, what is the effect. It's affecting each other. To give the children regulation support and to maintain the dynamic framework of a sy systemic approach. The facilitation of network is important responsibility for principal. This is a key ingredient in the educational leadership. Teachers should have the possibility to meet and exchange experience and expand their competences. Learning occurs in a social context, also for the teachers. In a network, teacher who may on a daily basis work along with the child, have the opportunity to connect with other educators and to expand their repertoire. The principal might be somewhat removed from the everyday work at the school. Even so, they should promote the systemic approach and understand how important relationships are for working with children with special needs. Support their teachers and and create opportunities for professional growth. In practice, work in creating a dynamic and adaptable classroom, my benefit from what I suggest should be a threefold mapping tool. Below the line, it's a tool that Nubu already has created, which focuses on the relationship. Based on the results, the teacher are responsible for taking necessary actions, improving the relationship. Sadly, the tool is not commonly used. Above the line are what I suggest to be an equal importancy, the individual and the system that surrounds them. This is not an established routine. In school, we measure child from standards and norm. But we also need the tool to see the child's possibilities. We then might miss the focus on the individual skills and other positive elements. In parallel, we should also focus on the teacher and the system. What can they do to meet each child? How often does the teacher put themselves under scrutiny? So instead of just measuring the child according to norms and standards, educational leadership should map the framework, the structure surrounding the child, shift the focus from the child's achievement to the teacher and the system's achievements. Focus on ourselves. Who are the only participants we can change? The mapping tool would then focus on the individual the system and the relationship at the same time. This makes it possible for a dynamic and adaptable classroom. In Brunfeldt-Brenner's uh, thinking, the quality and the context of the child's environment is of vital importance. How does the world that surround the, uh, surrounds the child help or hinder continued development? I will end with Kirkegaard, who said something wise about understanding each other. He states that we must understand the other and put ourselves in their place to be able to help. This is also true in educational leadership. All level must understand and work together to create meaningful relationship and possibilities for growth. It is a connected relationship where, if all levels function and work together, the child will be the one reaping the benefits. Where the child can learn in an adaptable environment built on relationship, competency and willingness to understand. Without context, word and action have no meaning at all. Wisdom is the intelligence of the system as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions, please? 
Well, can, can, I, can I start? Oh, I'll start off if I may. Um, what you've proposed there, it seems to me, fits the expansion of the definition of special needs in the UK over the years. I remember when we had our first special needs laws coming in, and it was a very specific set of, of, of problems that children had. Mm. And increasingly, the view is that every child has special needs of some sort or another. Mm. Um, so do you think this is an approach for all children, or is there something yeah, special? Course. Yeah, it is. I think so. Yeah. Right. So, so I think this is important for all children. All every children has has uh, um, a unique starting point, uh, and they come into a classroom, and everybody is different. Uh, and I think that if we can, at the beginning at school, can they can feel that the, uh, all the things they are good at will be uh, grow. That we take what uh, utgångspunkt um, Point. Yeah, uh, from the child uh, and not always the pre-made rules. Mm. And mm. in Norway, we measure the kids uh, by by skills, like um, um, in math or English. And yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Um, two things. First. We regularly use the Cambridge Handbook of Expertise and Expert Performance and not our adult education researchers' definitions on, on expertise. And that Cambridge book is, is nothing about education. It's really about performing and, and what you do. And I was listening to you from that perspective. And it was a wonderful presentation that you had, really thinking of one is coming into the classroom and then what happens as a performance and it made it everything so so beautifully yeah. concrete the other thing in one of the slides it was whether it's the child adapting to the environment or the environment being adapted to the children and in relation to the mission of education and I look at the world from system theory and contingency theory and contingency theory is a lot about organizations adapting to the environment and I have a major personal conflict in my thinking there because to me education is not to adapt but to make the future and a very simple question to you um, in relation to you had the child there and, uh, and about education. How, how, how would you see about that? Uh, are we to adapt to what there is or are we really to change it all? I understand that it's impossible that you don't have anything uh, when the children come to school. You have to have a, a sort of framework, but often the framework is so uh, set. It's so, uh, um, this is how I want to be uh, the classroom to be. This is my rules and you have to follow my rules. If you don't follow the rules, you don't fit in here. I want to change the thinking about that more for the teacher and the leadership to see that okay how can i uh, do something to make the to, to use the child's possibilities into my classroom um, that is what i what i want to can I, can I follow up on that? Because when you were talking about that, I went back to my teacher training days and Jean Piaget and assimilation and accommodation. Uh, but it was never spelt out to me to my satisfaction as a teacher what exactly was the balance and whether, yet again, we're talking about the context and we're talking about the children and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm not sure there is an answer. Is it, do you see it as an open question? As, a, as, a, as an open judgment, depending on the situation. Any other questions, please? Thank you, and thank you for your presentation. Uh, in Finland, uh, we uh, think in accordance uh, with positive 
psychology uh, that all children and adults ha have strengths and in schools and early childhood education we adults strengthening these strengths do you believe or doing in your way in positive psychology <laughs> We didn't really ask. Yeah. Could you explain it once more? Ah, okay. So, okay, Eli. Um, in Finland, we believe in and uh, we believe. In the strength. Yes, yes, and yes, and that all children have strength and positive. positive uh, yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, it's uh, adults or teachers' mindset that uh, how they see uh, that uh, children with positive lens or something like that. Uh, that uh, all children participate uh, class or children's group, and this is very um, good point of view. But I still. Um, want some um, uh, theories about uh, new ni positive pedagogy or newest uh, because ni, because Bron Bronfen Brenner or Wikotski is so familiar to us <laughs> that um, uh, so is positive psychology point of view, familiar to you. We understand what you say, and uh, Vygotsky, of course, is very crucial all the time in all kinds of education, but also motivation theory is, is coming more and more. And uh, uh, Etienne Ryan and so on, to, to look at the, the outer and inner uh, motivation. And when you compare this with Vygotsky, then you, yeah, then you make the, the, the child active and not uh, a passive uh, user only, but an active player. Uh, this is motivation theory uh, gives us together with Vygotsky. That's a very interesting, very interesting, uh, extremely interesting, uh, can we say, territory to, to, to look into more. Thank you for that. Do we have any more questions for Caroline? Well, uh, yeah. can, I, can I just thank Caroline for the presentation, the clarity of it, and the nice presentation as well. Thank you very much.